Okay, so we're going to be looking at now some exact values of the sine, cos and tan of 30 degrees, 45 degrees and 60 degrees. And you actually will have seen these if you uh, remember them from GCSE, but I want to explain a bit about where these come from. And also I want to explain why do we even want to know these when we have a calculator? Well, part of this is about really getting to know these trigonometric functions. The more you understand the way that they behave, the more that you're going to feel comfortable with them as we go through using them in the future. And if you can remember these things off the top of your head for the 30 degrees, 45 degrees and 60 degrees, you actually save an awful lot of time than rather than having to sort of type stuff into your calculator. So what I've written here is that you will frequently encounter angles of 30 degrees, 60 degrees and 45 degrees in geometric problems. And this is because we see these angles in equilateral triangles and in half squares. So although you will always have a calculator, you do need to know how to derive these things. And actually, it's going to be really, really speedy for you if you don't have to keep typing stuff in your calculator. So the way to do this then is to find out these is actually just to draw half of a unit square for one of the sets and how you have to draw half of an equilateral triangle of side two. So I'm going to start off with drawing half of a unit square. Now a unit square is obviously a square whose sides are all one long. But it only wants us to draw half of the square, and actually the half of the square that we want to draw is so that it is like this. We know that for a square, this angle down here will be 90 degrees, and actually these ones are going to be 45 degrees that we have here, and this one at the top. But I don't really think I'm going to need to label that one. So I'm going to get rid of this section that I have here and here, and this is a unit square, which means all of the sides of the square are one. So what I'm going to do is actually find out the length of the hypotenuse. Now the hypotenuse is just going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is just root 2. So the hypotenuse here is just root 2. Now using this triangle and this as our angle, we can see that the cosine of this 45 degrees is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So this must mean that the cos of 45 is equal to 1 over root 2. And I'll just confirm that for you here. The cos of 45 is 1 over root 2. Now on your calculators, it will be rationalised. And when it rationalises, you will see that it actually just comes up as root 2 over 2. I usually remember this one, but calculators give this one that we have here. Coming back to this angle that we've got, we're now going to try and find out the sine of 45 degrees. Now, the sine is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So the sine of 45, let's stick this in the same colour though. The sine of 45 degrees is also 1 over root 2, which we know is root 2 over 2. Last of all, the one that I'm interested in from this triangle here is the tan of 45. And the tan of 45 is just the opposite divided by the adjacent, which is just 1 divided by 1. So the tan of 45 degrees, I really should have said these are degrees, is just 1 over 1, which is 1. So the things that I would like you to try and remember here is that the cos of 45 is 1 over root 2, the sine of 45 is also 1 over root 2, and the tan of 45 is 1. Now we're going to think about how to do this next one, which is about using half of an equilateral triangle of side length 2. So I'm going to start off by drawing an equilateral triangle as best as I can. And it says that the side length is 2. And I'm going to try and split this triangle in half. Now if I've split this triangle in half, running along the bottom is 1, which means that this is going to be a right angle. And actually I can get rid of this part of the triangle now, because I only want half of it. Be a little bit more careful, that's better. Okay. Now, if I only want half, um, I need to find out how long this side is that we've got running down the side here. So Pythagoras again, it is going to be the square root of 2 squared minus 1 squared in this case, which is just the square root of 4 minus 1, which is just root 3. So this side over here is root 3. Now, all we need to do is think about the different angles that we've got. Well, because it's an equilateral triangle, this must be 60 degrees. And if you think about it, this one that we had along here was 60 degrees, and we're just halving it. So it's just going to be 30 degrees like this. Okay, now that we've got to this part of it, we can actually work out the sine and cos and tan of 30 and 60 degrees. 
So I'm going to start off by concentrating on the 30 degrees. Okay, this is the angle that I'm looking at. And so that means if I start off with, oh, let's start off with the sine of 30. The sine of 30 is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So I'm just going to write that down, that the sine of 30 degrees is the opposite, which is 1, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 2. And while I'm there, I'm also going to work out what the cos of 30 is. Now, the cos of 30 is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, which is just root 3 over 2. And I'm also going to work out what the tan of 30 degrees is. And the tan of 30 is the opposite, which is this one, divided by the adjacent, which is 1 over root 3. And if you put that into your calculator, that comes out as root 3 over 3. But personally, I prefer just to remember 1 over root 3. OK, my calculator that I have here will actually give me the non-rationalized version, but I think yours will give you the rationalized version instead. OK, so the next thing that I want to do is to focus on the other angle, which is 60 degrees. And this time I'm going to work out what the sine of 60 degrees is. Let's stick to the same color, though. So the sine of 60 degrees, now we're concentrating on this one, is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So it's root 3 over 2. Notice how in this one, the sine of 30 is a half and the sine of 60 is not a half. It's, it's different. They don't match each other. It would be very odd if they were the same value. And now I'm going to have a look at the cos of 60. So cos of 60 degrees, you can guess what this one is going to be, but I'm going to still do it. Here's our 60. This is the adjacent and this is the hypotenuse. So it is a half. And then my last one I'm going to look at is the tan of 60 degrees. And so we're going to be concentrating on this, the opposite divided by the adjacent. So it's root 3 divided by 1, which is just root 3. Now, there's some patterns that I want you to notice here. First of all, the sine of 30 and the cos of 60 are both a half. And the reason that they're actually the same as each other, if you think about this really carefully, is sine of 30 and cos of 60 because of the co-function. Remember when we said that the sine of theta was equal to the cos of 90 minus theta? Well, that actually applies there, doesn't it? And then you can also see some other bits that match up as well. So you can see that the cos of 30 is the same as the sine of 60. And then our last bit that we've got left over here, which I'm going to have to try and find another colour, is that we've got a tan of 30, which is root 3 over, uh, sorry, 1 over root 3. And then we've got the tan of 60 is something different. It's root 3. Now I'm going to add in a page here and I'm going to show you the way that I memorise these ones personally. So let's add in another one of these here. Let's just do the same as this. So I've got a spare bit here. OK, so the way I would do this is for the 45 degree ones is I just know I've memorized that sine of 45 is 1 over root 2. And I also know that cos of 45 is just the same as that. Tan of 45, you can imagine that triangle. It means where the opposite and the adjacent are just 1 and 1. So you just get 1. Those ones you kind of do just need to remember them, but I guess the trick is remembering that those are the same as each other. Now, here's how I remember the other ones. The only one I really, really need to remember is that the sine of 30 degrees is a half. Once I know that the sine of 30 degrees is a half, I then know that the cos of 30 degrees must be the other one, which is root 3 over 2. And then if sine of 30 degrees is a half, then I know that sine of 60 degrees can't be a half. So it's got to be the other one, which is root 3 over 2. And then that means that I've got the cos of 60 degrees. So the cos of 60 degrees can't be root 3 over 2. So it's got to be the other one, which is a half. So do you see how by starting off memorizing just this one that I've got here, you're able to find out this one, this one, and this one just by knowing the properties that they're not going to both be a half, OK? Then the last ones that I remember is I have the tan of 30 degrees and I have the tan of 60 degrees. Now, you've got a choice here between 1 over root 3 and root 3. And I've got a bit of a, a, a cheap way of remembering this. Uh, root 3 is actually bigger than 1 over root 3. I'll just quickly show you that on a calculator. Let's just clear this for a second. Root 3 is, let's see that as a decimal, 1.73. And 1 divided by root 3 is 0 0.577. So I remember that the small angle goes with the small one and the big angle goes with the big one. So tan of 30 is 1 over root 3 and tan of 60 is root 3. So what I want you to try and do is to try and memorize these. 
And I want you to try and use this technique of starting off with knowing what sine 30 is as a half to help you find out this, 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 and this idea down here of how you know which one goes with tan 60 or tan 30. The other alternative is to draw yourself a quick sketch of either this one here or this one here. And you're gonna have to trust me about why these are useful. Okay, I'm gonna do a separate video that will help you with exercise 10b.